Okay, so now that I've realised that I made a mistake with these measurements, I'll show you first how uh, you can always check for mistakes like that. And I'll show you a couple of good options you can use to correct those things. So I'm going to start by drawing in a dimension. And that's something you can do at any stage, both to check your measurements and also to help you work with those measurements. So I'm going to the Modify tab to quickly get to this dimension uh, tool, Align Dimension, and I'm going to draw a dimension between the two reference planes, place it, and over here I will dimension the rest of my reference planes maybe to help you check as well to see where you might have any, any problems. So now I'm going to go through a little bit more methodically and see based on what I've got in this drawing uh, where I might have a mistake. So at the front, 3050, that's right. Okay, so I'm going to select that dimension and lock it now that I know it's correct. That way I can't move this reference plane even if I want to. You'll see if I go to use the move tool, it lets me move it, but this reference plane has gone with it. Okay, so I can't change the dimension between those reference planes, but then how do I keep this reference plane from moving? Got a couple of options. I can either lock it to the boundary or I can pin it. Okay, they both would work. Um, I think I'll pin it. So I'm going to select the reference plane and then you'll see up on the modify tab you've got this pin option. So that's now locked in place and if I try again to move this reference plane with the move tool, you can see what happens. It tells me constraints are not satisfied so I can't do that without removing the constraints. So that's a good option. So now I'll go along to this one. So this reference plane now is in the right place we know because that measurement there we know is 800. So I'll select that and again lock it. So now I've got this next measurement and looking at the drawing here we can see, well we can't actually see because I didn't dimension it, but if it was there we'd maybe know that that was wrong. Um, but let's go across to the other side and we can still work it out. So here we've got the measurement that we, we know is causing the problem, but we're going to see how we know that. So again, if I select the, uh, the dimension, just to maybe come back to the drawing. So we can see here this one is 5650 plus 250 for the wall thickness at either end. So that gives us 6150, 5650 plus 500. So that's correct. So I don't want that to change, so I'm going to lock that dimension. But notice I'm leaving this one unlocked because we're not sure if that's correct and in fact we know it's wrong. So now to correct that, I'm going to select the reference plane that's in the wrong place and then change the measurement to what it should be, which is actually 2760 plus 250 for the wall thickness, which is what I left off. So that makes it 3010. Enter. So notice how it's kept that measurement, 6150, and moved this reference plane over here, which is exactly what I want. But what I didn't do is lock the walls to my reference plane. You can do that, but I didn't do that. So now I need to move the walls to follow the changes to my reference plane. So for that, I'm going to use the Align tool. So with Align, I can choose the reference plane and then the wall. I notice how it's moved the wall and it's also giving me this lock option. So now I can lock it. And I'll do the same with this next reference plane and then again choose the outside of my wall and then again lock it. So now, if I realise later that I still want to change this, maybe I might decide, well, I don't really mind if I lose that 10 mil and make it 3,000. I can select the reference plane, change that to 3,000, and the wall goes with it. Just so you can see it 
move a bit further. I'll change it to 2500. And again, the wall's moved, as has the one on the left, and the reference plane because they're all locked together. So I'll undo that because I do want it to go back to 310. But just so you can see um, how you can constrain objects and lock them to one another and build up hierarchies of constraints, which is actually one of the big selling features of Revit. It's a big advantage it has over you know, programs like ITCAD. ITCAD can't do that. Uh, yeah, it is. Yep. Yeah. That's it, yeah. So it's whatever. I didn't know what it was, but that's what it should end up with now that I can see these measurements on the other side of that, either side of both right. And so then to check it, I'll put the dimensions going the other way now. So again with the dimension tool, and we'll go from the top there down to the next reference plane, and the one after, and the one after that. Place it. So that's a really good way of checking all those measurements. And notice I'm ignoring the wall thicknesses. So if you have reference plane, you have to Oh, you can. You can dimension straight to the walls. Yeah. Just sometimes not as clear because you won't know if you're dimensioning, you know, measuring to the outside or the inside. And yeah, there's a few options. So if you want to measure to the outside of a wall, just make sure when you're drawing your dimensions that you change this option here to wall faces instead of wall center line. And then now, yeah, so I can easily pick the walls. Yeah, instead of drawing it from the centre line, yeah, it draws to the outside. Yeah, and it's only in Europe that they dimension to the centre lines. It's better, oh, much more logical, oh, far more, far better. But people outside of Europe, for some reason, have never coped with it. Yeah. Oh yeah. We, oh yeah. I was going to do one more thing. Yeah. But yeah. So, but it, that's why it's on default on wall face, wall centre lines. Seems true in interior. If you're yeah, interior, nice interior people. From the inside, yeah. So wall faces, yeah. yeah. But when you're building walls, center lines better. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So then the f the next thing is uh, probably a bit more important, and that's to get some floors for these landings. So now we've got the upper floor level, and then you can just draw a floor on the architecture tab, make the floor with the floor tool. Okay, so because I've started on upper floor, that'll be the height of my floor. So to make this first uh, landing here, I'm actually just going to set it into the, uh, off to the edge of the wall. In other words, in this area here. And so, Honestly, you could use pick walls, but I'm simply going to change to use the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle snapping under the corner of the building there and going down to the corner here. And so then I'm going to finish it by clicking the tick. Then I'm going to change the height offset there to minus 150 while it's still selected. And so, to make it clear to you, uh, oh, minus 150. Yep. And I'm going to do that again for the next one. But just so that it is uh, obvious that this is uh, stepping down, I'm going to put a door in. I'm not too worried about the size of this door just now, so I'm going to again just use the door tool and just place a door very roughly into that opening there or into that space where we know the front door is. We'll come back and we'll adjust that afterwards. But now I just want to show you, if I go to a 3D view, we should be able to see that the floor is stepping down from that door level. So, yeah, so I'm going to repeat that now on the, um, for the balcony for the next floor. So I'm going to use the floor tool again, starting with upper floor. Let's use the floor tool again. And again, just go to draw a rectangle. And very roughly starting on the outside corner and coming down and going to the reference plane for now. We'll fine tune this afterwards. 
I'll just click there on that reference plane. And from memory, this one was about a metre. I don't actually have that. Well, I do have the measurement, but it's in another file. So for now, I'm going to say it is a metre, roughly. So, okay, so just watch out here when you go and uh, draw the rectangle. If you then try to change the measurement, uh, you need to make sure that it's taking it from the left and bring that back to the to the right, so this edge is still sitting on the face of the building. Which Revit is actually pretty good at working out for you. But again, you just need to keep an eye on it. And again, just like before, before I change the height in uh, properties here, I'm going to finish it and then change that height offset from the level after I finished it. Just so it doesn't go in as a default setting, because if you do it before you finish it, then the next floor you make is going to be set down and you don't want that. So I've got those two floors, uh, which are what we'll need for the next step, which is to do the stairs. But I think because you probably, I think, can all cope with that, I'll just show you one last thing. And that might be enough for today, actually, because I think we'll have to do the stairs um, next time. We'll see how we go. Uh, so if you go to lower floor, I think you should all be able to get a floor for that as well. So using the floor tool, this time I will use pick walls and just pick the inside face of all of the walls. So don't forget, it's got to be a closed shape, so trim to corner when necessary to make it a closed loop around the outside. Tick to finish. Yes, when it asks about cutting and joining. And then you can just repeat the same thing for the upper floor. You see how quick, it is, quick and easy it is to get these basic elements set up? There we go. And again, yes. Now if I look at it in section, you can see those two floors and the previous two that I did. So maybe the very last thing, because I know not everyone picked this up for the last assignment, if you want the floors to show black just like the walls, then you can go to Edit Type, and without changing anything else here, I'm just going to change that graphics option so that the colour there we can see is on black, and then to see that colour, I'm going to change the uh, fill option there to Solid Fill. And now they'll all show nice and uh, filled in. And this will be more than enough. So, yes, yeah, so I'll give you a chance to, to try that.